Two different hustlers on that same road. They on that same mode. To stack their bread, they got them same goals. The wins and losses, how that gang go. And I promise I ain't blinded by the fact I got my city on my back. It's on my mind, I gotta get it. I pray to God I gotta get it. I gotta go ahead, keep on shining for my city. I took some else, but gotta flip it. Won't leave my mind until I get it. Won't close my eyes and keep it wrong till it's clear. It's on my mind, I gotta get it. I pray to God I gotta get it. I gotta go ahead, keep on shining for my city. I took some else, but gotta flip it. Won't leave my mind until I get it. Won't close my eyes and keep it what up, what up, what up? Hope everybody good. I told you, listen, we coming with heat. All oh, year we coming with heat. I got my guys here with me today. We got Demarte Johnson, aka Tay, and we got Eric Stokes, aka E. Fellas, man, uh, just kind of introduce you guys with a with a with a small background start with Tay. Tell the people what you do, how you got here, man, and just kind of give the people a brief introduction of you. Bet, bet, bet. Like you said, it's your boy Tay, Tay Fit. From Virginia originally, 75 to be exact, Norfolk. Been in Charlotte for about five years now. Uh, we in our gym, opened up. We've been here about a year and a half. Man, how I ended here, she just wanted some change for real. So, like, a uh, little bit of background played football at Norfolk State, graduated from there, played a couple seasons in Arena, Philly, went back to VA, and we'll get into more stuff later, but, you know, just kind of. From upbringing and background, kind of got into some little situations or whatever, and it got to a point to where, you know, needed some change, man. And came down here one weekend with my aunt. She took me to a Hornets game. I'll never forget. We sitting courtside on the floor, and I'm just looking like, damn, this shit lit. Like, we ain't got nothing like this in VA. Like, straight up. I went back home, called my dog, my best friend, King. He came over. I'm like, bro, I'm moving. Right. Moving to Charlotte, just like that. Packed all, all right. my clothes. I told my grandma she came in, told my granddaddy. Like, I need some change. I'm gonna get myself six months to figure this shit out. So, literally took just my clothes in my car and came down here. Stayed with my aunt. First five months, I probably had about 10 jobs. Couldn't find nothing that was fitting. So, I'm like, damn, I gotta go back. Like, this shit ain't, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Then, on that six month, man, got a, a decent job working at the gym as a salesman. Damn. And I was like, all right, started meeting people. Met a club on out here, man. I said, we'll get into the story later. Shout, shout out him, but he started, basically took me on this wing and showing me some game and putting me on around some people. And then five years later, I'm here and we got this. So Straight that's kind of like how I got here. Nah, that's dope, bro. That's dope, he, Yeah. So Eric Stokes, man, everybody call me Stokes. You know, me and Trey, both from uh, Danville, Virginia. Both grew up there. Um, I started, uh, boxing at a young age, uh, I really started taking it serious around probably around 14, 13, 14, something like that. Uh, one of my best friends, man, shout him out, uh, Ronnie G. Mm -hmm. He um, he really, really got me into it, shout man, out Ronnie, and, and man. took me up under his wing, man, and, uh, and showed me the ropes, man. So shout out to my dog, Ronnie. Absolutely. Um, and like I said, we'll get into the story later, but uh, I, um, I started here, I, I moved to Charlotte about five years ago. So I came here, I got a job working for this uh, food servicing company. Mm. So I was working there, working long hours, man. Um, a lot of time away from my family, my kids. Um, and I wanted change, man. So I started praying for change. So I uh, yeah. started praying to God, asking him, you know, show me my purpose. And uh, one day he just told me, man, like, you know, your time here is done, you gotta go. Um, so I took that step of faith, man. And um, I've been here rocking out at the gym for about six months now. Um, like I said, man, and we, we just going from here. Like it's it's only up from here. For sure, for sure. Both of y'all talk about faith, man. Uh, I'm a man of faith too. Um, I've needed it to get to the point of where I am now. You right. know what I mean? Um, playing ball, entering the real world, just doing all types of stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Getting married, all types of stuff, man. And, um, I find that you really gotta rely on faith, and it's not just something you talk about. Like it's something you gotta actually practice. That's right. So so tell me about it, man. Like what? How did you, how did you get introduced to the concept of faith and, you know what I mean, just, um, you know, the concept of believing in God or a higher purpose or whatever you believe in, like, how did you get into that stuff, to you? So, my, um, my sisters, my mom, all of them, man, used to try to tell me about God. Yeah. Um, but I never would, like, I, I heard them, but I was listening to them, but I didn't hear them. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It's a difference. So, I, um, moved down here, I met this guy, his, uh, his name Lamont, um. Uh, Lamont did uh, 14 years in the penitentiary. Um, mm. 
and he does a lot of the stuff that I want to do and I wanted to do, um, which was working with the youth, yeah. uh, trying to get these kids off the streets, man. And, um, you know, he started talking to me about God. Um, and really it's because of him that I have this such a uh, sense of uh, strong faith now. It's, it's all because of him, you know, just him telling me his story and um, him making me believe that God is real and, you know, you really have to rely on God and rely on faith and, and pray and manifest and put in the work as well. Facts. So um, it, it all started from him, man. And I met Lamont um, uh, a little bit, a little a little before I quit my job. For sure. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm here now, man. Strong believer in God. You know, my faith is, is through the roof now. Absolutely. Shout out Lamont too, man. Yeah, for Thank sure. You. Shoot, man, kind of, yeah, stop from upbringing, too. I mean, I come up in the house, like, especially on my mom's side. My grandma, shoot, we church. Every Sunday. Every Sunday, bro. Go to church every Sunday. Every Sunday, bro, Sunday, every Sunday. School, every Sunday. 11 o'clock service, this service, come that on, service. Bro. Pastor's night, so it's like, oh, man. We did it all. Bro. Bible study on Wednesdays. Come on, now, I just want to go outside and play. Like... Let me go play in the hood, yeah, bro. I'm telling you, bro, if you and stayed so... at his house on Saturday night, Ooh, was doing oh, you going to church Sunday morning, dog. That's how my grandma was like, better have your church clothes. And if not, what? We got oh, you ain't got you. no clothes? Go. Okay. We got something for you. So I got like, something for you. Doing whatever on Saturday, but on Sunday yeah. morning, dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah going to church. But it was crazy because it's like, my granddaddy, he didn't go. Like, my granddaddy was yeah. like a gangster. So I always figured yeah. out, like, how y'all end up even being married? Like, yeah. I gotta, yeah, why yeah. I got to go to, why I can't stay here with you? <laughs> like, he would go to the bootlegger house or something. Yeah, instead. yeah. So it's like, but that early, I tell people, like, when you a child, the earliness of getting introduced to it, you don't have your own understanding of it, yeah. but you know. So yeah. it's like, all right, I grew up knowing, but I wouldn't say, I ain't getting no understanding for myself right. until about, like right after college, yeah, and I, an yeah, and I kind of, you know, I, I redid the baptism thing, did it with my own understanding, mm -hmm. and now it's like, you know, you start going through stuff, you start going through life, like when shit get hard, and it's yeah. like, all right, because it's gonna happen. Yeah, then you start <laughs> exactly. to ask yourself like, why? And I'm a man of like, no matter what, I always believe in science. So mm -hmm. like, when certain stuff start happening, mm -hmm. I get to look at them like, all right, they say faith is what you can't see, so I gotta ask, but I can't see God why this happened. And then you'll get the sign that's like enough of that, a repetition of that, <coughs> you gotta know it's real at this point. So it's like right. and then I don't I don't just credit it when stuff is going good. Like when stuff going bad, yeah. I always feel like, all right, let me lean on this to get me out of the situation. Cause I know okay, if God can make it good, he can make it bad. When he make it bad, what do you want me to learn from this bad? To make it back good. So exactly. I don't know I'm at a point now to where it's like my Faith be through the roof, cause again, even with doing this, it's like it ain't no one no direction with this. Yeah, like we still no figuring this out. Like ain't no right. paycheck come in every week. Ain't no this. You just had to be so like when life started happening. If nothing else, I know. I right, let me turn to God because yeah, this who's been rocking with me to, since I've been here. Yeah. So yeah, I ain't right. about to stop now. Hundred percent, right. man. It's about adjusting. Like that's all life is. I feel like especially us, man. Like late twenties, early thirties. Like dog is about adjusting. Things gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes life will be going good, sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes yeah, you're going to be up, sometimes you're not. But it's just about, mm -hmm. like, not ever getting out to fight. You know what I mean? Like, not getting mm -hmm. too high, not getting too low. Yeah. Just being able to just pick back up and, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's really a hustler's mentality, dog. Sure. You know what I sure. mean? Like, being able to, to lose it all, <laughs> if it ever comes to that, and gain it right back. Yeah, right back. You know what I mean? Because that's the only thing. Yeah. That 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 that's gonna help us survive out here, dog. Right. At the end of the day, it's a jungle. It's yeah. a jungle, it's bro. A jungle. Yeah. Only the strong gonna survive. And exactly. If you ain't strong, hey, you are gonna get exposed. That's the <laughs> bottom line. In, in, in any area, dog. Like yeah, yeah. any area. So it's interesting, bro, because um, you play professional football. You are a professional boxer, man. Just kind of talk about what it takes to become a professional. We talking about the highest of the highest at your sport. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of talk about that. Start with you. Man, it just it's, it take hard work and dedication to yeah. to get there. That that boxing grind is a a whole different grind, man. Um, I remember working out two three times a day, um, you know, cause you in there by yourself. You don't have anybody to lean on. You don't have your teammates to lean on. When you when you're doing bad, you can't. You don't have nobody to pick you up. It's yeah. it's all on you. You can listen yeah. to your coach's direction in the corner, but it's all on you to go out there and make it happen. Um, but man, I was I was dedicated to it, man, and. Um, it was a uh, kind of therapy for me. Yeah. So having that therapy for, for me in the boxing ring and the training is, is how I made it through. 
um, even now to this day, I still have that same mentality when I'm working out myself or I'm working on my clients. I still have that same grind. Um, but getting there, man, it's it's rough, man. Uh, and I learned a lot from you know watching my peers, um, yeah. watching how uh, Lil Ronnie uh, spoke about him before, like, watching how he grinded and how he really put the work in. Yeah. Um, and even um, watching y'all as y'all was young, man. Um, I remember y'all having games, and after the game, y'all practicing after the game. Practice. For uh, sure. Or For sure. after practice, y'all y'all on the hills or whatever it may be. Um, and I, I feel like you know too, uh, you got to have a strong support system too to make it to that level because. I'm telling you, man, like uh, watching your mom and your dad really helped me to understand what it means to, to have a family and uh, set those standards and set that grind up into your children. Um, sure. Watching them, man. I remember, you know, y'all having to come home and you got to go straight to the library, uh, study or whatever oh, it, it may man. be. So, um, <clears throat> man, I, I, I remember that. And if, like I said, if you coming over there after school, oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, you got to go in there too. First. You got to do that homework listen, too. Bro, that homework getting done first. Like, we're going to go outside and we're going to do whatever. But yep. it be, oh, listen, bro, like, it be people outside in our crib. Like, yep. and we in the house bro, looking out the window. Outside, bro, come yeah, on, you better get you it done. That, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, that shit is saying right by the door. Shit, take them all drinks and stuff too. Yeah, like, yeah, they'll yeah. be outside as soon as they finish. Bro, we yeah. looking at her like, man, come on. That's why your mama messed with me. She got to know how my mama was. Bro, I'm telling you, bro. That's why I felt like I'm like, I'm talking to my mama. Bro, I'm telling you, the very first time. The first time I met her, I'm like, I remember, bro. She don't play. Like, that's exactly how my mama was. She don't play. You know what I mean? But. She installed that in us too, she man. And, did, bro. Um, even like, so my mom still teaches to this day, yeah. elementary school, and it's just like even the kids that she run across now, like dog, there's so many people that come to me, like they grown and all this other stuff, and it's just like, yo, like you don't understand, like how big of an influence yeah. your mom was, your dad was, your parents was in our lives, and I'm like, dang, like mm -hmm. it get me to thinking, like for real, bro, like, cause I see it every single day, so yeah. sometimes you know what I mean. You know, sometimes you may take it for granted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you hear other people saying it and, and just like the successes they, they have going on in their life right now and the mm -hmm. things that they've been able to accomplish and the things that they remember, yeah. it's just like, dog, like, yeah. man, we was being taught this every single day. Every day. So, uh, you know, shout out Miss Cookie and Furrow, man. Man, definitely, sure. man. Shout them out. 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 And I appreciate it. it's still a professional level, but you know, mine was a step under that, so I ain't even never get to crack the league. But Arena was, that was really just me getting football out of me, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. coming out of college at my pro day, you know, I pulled my darn growing running the 40. So it's like, after that, I think, go back like what you said, Tate. Like he said, it's definitely the hard work and dedication, but I'm gonna add a third act, uh, piece to that. And it's, man, it's your network, bro. Like, who you know, like, and as we go on, I touch on it like, who you know will take you further than what you can know. So like, Chubby, you know, through talking like my Chubby. best friend, Keenan, that's Cam, little brother. So like, yeah. after I had got hurt, you know, I was fortunate enough to, you know, Cam reached out, man, work with my trainer, here, get you right. Mm -hmm. And meeting Kev, you know, shout out to Kev. Shout out Kev. He man. got my growing right, and he had played arena back in the day. I never even knew what arena football yeah, was, but man, like, you ain't right. really heard too much about it. He's like, man, you want to play, I can get you set up. Got me right, started teaching me you know, different techniques from a DB standpoint. And now, you know, you got motion, man. You got different type of stuff yeah, to do. So, like, different sides for yeah, you all, so he taught me that. Went up there, killed the tryout, and had, like, a, a hell of a good season. So, for me, it was more so just getting football out. When I left college, yeah. I'm like, damn, thought I was going to go here, but yeah. this ain't work out. But yeah. I don't feel like I don't want to be done playing football. So, yeah. let me let me go ahead and get this out. But... You know, the end goal is always you want to make the sleeve when you don't. Because coming from where we come from, it's like, all right, I only seen two types of people just getting money in, especially where I'm at. Talk if about you me. ain't in the military and VA, Talk you about pushing weight. If Talk you ain't about pushing me. weight, you Talk done made it to the league and they want a lot of people. So it's like, all right, what's next out here? Yeah. So like, and again, as we go further, I ain't learned that until I got here. So for real, for me, it was just like I needed to get that. Let me get this out to say I right, I play football at the next level. Yeah, now nah, that's that's interesting, bro. Like at the end of the day, bro, all of us we grew up in a community, in a sense to where it's, we like the nice cars, we like the nice clothes, the the, the hip hop culture, like all of that stuff. But that's us, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so like, we want to be surrounded by that. Yeah. And the people we look up to by growing up, 
Come on, man. They had all that. Like, they had the yeah. jewels. They had the cars. They had the, you know what I mean, the attention, all this other stuff. Yeah. It was just like, not in an arrogant way, but it's just like, dog, I want to be like him. Like, yeah. our mics was different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we had Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Nah. Like, yeah. dog. You you had cats coming out your backyard yeah. that's legendary. Yeah. You know what I mean? We yeah. had some legendary people too coming out of Denver, but it's just like the people that we looked up to, boy, it wasn't Michael Jordan, bro. They weren't right. all clean cut dudes, but at the nah. same time, it's just like, dog, I want what they got. How can I get it? Sports, mm -hmm. pushing weight, military. You said it, bro. Yeah. But that brings me to my point, Tate. 757, seven yeah. cities. Yeah. Tidewater, Virginia. Anybody who don't know, the 757 is Tidewater, Virginia. Now, it's a lot of disruptance here as where the best athletes of Virginia come from. Seven. Some say the uh, 75, most say Danville, Virginia. Ain't no most say. You feel what I'm saying? But ain't no most say. No <laughs> no <most> say. <laughs> so 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 the 75, bro, it's a it's a breeding ground for athletes and not just football players, all athletes. Like yeah, arguably athletes the household the best names. Household yeah. names, though. Arguably the best. Uh, 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 basketball player pound for pound. Mm -hmm. Shout out Bubba Chuck, Allen Iverson. Yes, you know what I mean? Arguably the best quarterback to, you know what I mean? Grace yeah. his field. Yes, some, could, some could say that, right? That's yeah. right? Shout out Vic. You know what I mean? Arguably one of the best, um, you know, uh, uh, music producers of all time. Mm -hmm. You know, and we got two of the best music producers yeah, of all time. That. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, shout out Tim and shout out Pharrell. And, and, and arguably some of the most notorious cats that got money. You yeah. know what I mean? And we don't got to shout them out, but yeah. we all know what time it is. So just talk about it, bro. Like, what, what is it like coming from the 757? Like, knowing that you guys have had all the success in the past and, like, it's damn near a standard that y'all got to yeah. hold. You know and what I mean? they say it. Like, you hear it, it's something in the water. When people say something, something in the water, water, like, you really stand by that. And it's like, it ain't no arrogance or cockiness. It's just really, I tell people, who we are. It's yeah. who you are as a person. So, like, coming up in the environment, you know, I'm from Ingleside. So at the time, Ingleside, the island, you look outside and you see 20, 30 people in white tees on the corner yeah. and, like, they getting money. It's unified. It's yeah. just fun. We outside as kids. Like, I, I, my elementary school, we could walk to school, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. walking. So you seeing stuff. You walking 30 deep at a young age. So again, yeah. like you said, the, the role models, was it just looked a little different. Then yeah, as you get yeah. older, AI, Vic, again, these are people that look like us that made like it through us. sports. So it's still, they kept the swag, they kept the same people around. So it's like, yeah. and it was a sense of toughness, but like, and then, like I be hearing people say in my mouth, the shit talking. That's just what we was right. used to. Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, that, that, brought out, that brought out the, <laughs> like, the competition. Yeah, so it's like, talk. it ain't nothing disrespectful. I think that's just how we, we made each other better. Like. You can be at practice, you can be outside, you can be whatever, be about to come to blows with your dog yeah. just because of, man, I'm trying to make you better. But then when we go somewhere and there's somebody on the outside, yeah. oh, no, nah, you ain't, ain't nothing coming in between right. this. So it's like, yeah, that's just, it's, that's how it was. And even outside of just what you're saying, like, far as what we're saying, that's how my household was. Like, my granddaddy, like, instilled that in me early. Yeah. So, like, I come from a, a tough love family. So even now, as I get older, got a daughter and stuff, you know, I got to work on some things for myself because I know my upbringing was a little different than the average person. And anybody that know me, like, boy, the people that came to my house, it ain't no facade. Like, if you knew my granddaddy, yeah. you like, oh, no, nah, he ain't playing. If you knew my daddy, like, he ain't playing. Like, he, this is really how he came up. So, it's like, but on the flip, you see my grandma, sweet as can be, yeah. going to church. So, like, I kind of had the best of both worlds, so. Nah, that, that's a fact, bro. I, um, you know, I, I, I watched a whole lot of film growing up and still do, you know what I mean? And uh, all positions too. I don't just watch the position I play. Yeah. And uh, dog, one of the best persons I've ever seen on the football film on any level, Percy Harvin, dog. Oh, yeah. Percy one of the dope. absolute best. Bro, like, there's I'm, not too many people who got a tape. I don't care high school, college, professional. Ain't too many people that got a tape. Just I just day, told him yesterday in high school, and we can't make this up. Military no. Circle Mall in Norfolk, bro. On Fridays, if you went to the mall. And you in middle school, high school, and you trying to ask girls what they're doing, going to the movies, want to yeah. go skate and do whatever. No, I'm going to Ooh. watch Percy play. <laughs> like, he was that much of a, like, <clears throat> girls would be in there with the number 11 on. In high clock. school. I lie to you not, bro. I'm like, <laughs> like, he had it, bro. Like, anytime he touched the ball, you know, you, the crowd got to stand up because it's a 90% chance he might score. Yeah. Now, he was like that, though. Like, now, like you said, every, it's a lot of people that it's, it's like, okay, you got the Florida, the Texas, whatever. But I tell people, when you say Virginia, 
any name you really say, like they did it on a level as such to where, okay, y'all might have more, but the effect, like the you effect, said, you yeah, got yeah, Vic, AI, Alonzo Mourning, Percy Harvin, no, Lawrence Taylor, Ronald Curry. Ronald Curry. Shout out my pops. Like, Bro, let pops. Me, you know what like, I mean? Like, you got like, There's a lot of people you can name from Virginia that that's just the right, impact, bro. it was just like, you can't discredit this state when it comes to sports. Bruce Smith, come on, Bruce we can keep he going, bro. my mama, Booker T. The like, son was our roommate. Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea. Sweet. Come on, like. We gonna get into bro, it. It's like, you can't, you can't discredit it, bro. Like, that's, this shit just, it's crazy. We gonna get it's into crazy. it. E. With you, bro, um, you know, we come from Danville, Virginia, bro. Um, definitely doesn't get the same hype that, mm. you know, the seven cities get, but. It's still one of those unique places, you know what I mean? We still yeah, definitely yeah. included in the Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, and we never allow ourselves to get taken out of any conversations <clears throat> when it comes to athletes or right. any type of people we produce. Like, we think we got get money people the same way they do. Mm-hmm. We think we got athletes the same way they do. Right. Kind of talk about how it is, man, and the struggles and the benefits of, um, you know, coming from a small city and making it out of that. Uh, if y'all, if you ain't never been to Danville, man, it's it's... It's real small, man. Real small city. Um, we don't get the same, like you said, we don't get the same attention as everybody else. Yeah. Um, so to make it up out of there, man, you gotta be, you gotta really be on top of your game to make it out of out of Danville, Virginia, man. Um, it's home, man. It's always gonna be home. Um, but coming up, man, we seen the same things, like you know, guys that was getting money, man, and you you wanted to be just like them. Um, and then you know, growing up with my brothers and and seeing what they was doing. Um, and I wanted to be just like them. Um, but making it out of there, man, it's, you, like I said, you really gotta be on top of the game, man. You gotta really put in the work to be able to make it out of Danville, Virginia. It's that small. We don't get the, the, the scouts and all that to come and see. And your, your name really gotta be out there for a scout to come to the football game to watch you or a basketball game to watch you. But man, we done had some talent, man. We done had some talent come out of Danville, Virginia. Absolutely. Like multiple, multiple people come out of Danville, Virginia. So. Um, man, big big shout out to the four, man. Um, but the struggles of of living in a small city, man, and not getting the attention like us, you you really gotta. It's 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 extra work that you gotta put in, man. Yeah. It's um, to be seen. You really gotta cut separate different. yourself. Yeah. You got to. Yeah, cut you got to. Cut and, and, and like you said, but like you gotta have that 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 hardness in you, that toughness, yeah. that talk to talk. Because a lot yeah. of times, but like you will be in rooms where. You might be the only one, bro. You might be mm-hmm. one or two, one or three, one or four. Like, yep. it ain't going to be a lot of y'all. You know what I mean? And you either going to get drowned out or mm-hmm. get punked out or yeah. you going to hold your own. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we all know, bro. Like, yeah. if you want to make yeah. it anything out, chill, bro. Like, yeah. listen, gotta have come it. on, yeah. bro. You, you don't have that dog in you. If you yeah. want, you're going to get exposed, bro. We, we was we was always competitive, man. All of us, like, coming up. Like, that's we, we love to compete, man, in anything. Like, we competed in anything. Like, Football on the trampoline, uh, basketball in the backyard, swimming, anything you, you can think of, man. We always were, was competitive, man. And anybody that I, that I come, we always was competitive. That's that's just what it was. We wanted to win, man. Um, um, it's it's crazy because, um, like I said, we we grew up together, same street, bro. <clears throat> um, but it was like it was like one long street. And shout out to everybody from from my neighborhood, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody out doing big things. But it's just like. Yeah. Dog, we did back flips. We played. We had a dirt court, bro. We had a dirt court, and we just got there, and it was just like, all right, cool. We we moving today. One street dunk man, contest. Come on, bro. Straight up, bro. That's yeah. exactly how. That's all it was, but it was just like it was just fun. We had uh we, we had my man he used to sell drinks and, and candy Johnny and snack. B. Johnny B, man. Shout out Johnny, Johnny B. B. <laughs> man, you go, you get you a whole candy little snack, man. Like what? Yeah, that crazy dollar, 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 fifty, bro. Come on, you was, yeah, the dollar you was straight. You had anything, bro. I used to go scrape up all the change out my grandma's house. Man. Duh. Hey, I'm going across the street to Johnny B's and get some candy and all types. But um, uh, everything, man. They had everything, man. Shout out to Johnny B, man. Definitely oh, shout out to Johnny B, man. Sure. That um, uh, so so e. It makes me think, man, like, we grew up in the same quarters. Yeah. However, we still grew up different, mm-hmm. differently, yeah. I should say. Yeah. So kind of talk about that, bro, because 
you know, I think a lot of people sometimes they think that they have to be in certain environments or they have to be around certain <clears throat> things to get, you know what I mean? And I, and I know a lot of people I know, like my peers, they struggle with that because a lot of them came from them type of environments. Yeah. But now they're having kids, obviously they don't want to put their kids in yeah. that, you know what I mean? So, like, kind of talk about it, like, how, how can you grow up in the same environment as a person, but, you know, your path may be a little yeah. different or you may have seen a little bit more things. Yeah. Like, kind of talk about that. So... You know, my, my grandmother stayed um, on the same street, and I always was at my grandma's house, but my mom, we stayed in the city. Yeah. So, um, you know, I went to city schools, and, uh, you know, growing up watching my mom struggle, man, try to raise all of us, because, you know, I didn't have a father present, you know. Yeah. It was it was just us. And um, just growing up and, and seeing my mom struggle, man, it was, it was hard, you know. I remember, uh, like it was yesterday, man, uh, I came home off the school bus, and it was a note on my door, and uh, it said, uh, "You three months behind on rent. Mm. Uh, we gotta have, we gotta have this money by by this date, or you gotta go." Um, at, at this time, my brothers had already been been uh, killed, mm. so um, I, I I remember I sat there and waited for my mom man to get off work, um, and I yelled at my mom so bad, man, like, and all she was trying to do was get us what we wanted for Christmas, mm. so we wouldn't get picked on in school. Um, she just wanted to get us what we wanted, man. And from that day on, man, I just, you know, I had a different type of mentality. Of, of, I, I already lost my brothers, um, and I didn't want to see my mom struggle like that no more. And, you know, I could have took it a different way, but, you know, seeing and coming from where I come from, I felt like that was the easiest way for me to be right, able to right, take right. care of my family. Yeah, um, sure. So Especially that's, being the man in the house in the Yeah, time. man, I was the only man in the house, so I had to. I felt like I had to make something shake okay. um, for my family. And then coming out there with with with, with y'all, man, it was, it was like it was a, a comfort. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like I don't gotta be this person. I can actually be a kid when I come yeah. out here. But and it was a lot of us too. Yeah, a lot of yeah. us. Now that, that, that's dope, bro. That's dope. Yeah. I seen the whole evolution, so yeah. you know, I can yeah. definitely vouch. Yeah. Tay, man, uh, you talked about the seven five. You talked about Norfolk. Um, everybody know what it's like. Everybody from Virginia know what it's like. You know, growing up in the seven five. And hopefully, after this interview, we're gonna shine more light on the state of Virginia. But you also got some ties to St. Louis. Yeah. You know what I mean? And anybody who know anything about anything know that. <laughs> Whenever it's any type of you know crime talk or you know. Hooded cities, like any of that stuff. Like if you into any of that, number you one, know, number two. St. Louis produces. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. it's one of them places to where, it's, listen, dog, like you making up out of them, or you one of them. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. one of them. So kind of talk about that, bro, because you saw kind of the best of the best, or the worst of the worst, however you want to yeah, put it. Yeah, the, the worst of the worst. Yeah. Right? I ain't gonna hold you. Like truly, coming from Virginia, I thought it was like you know the hood. And I say, you, I, I I tell people it's hoods everywhere. It's hoods everywhere. So it's like you got to get that respect. But from how I was brought up, again, I say my my, my grandparents was in the house in yeah. Virginia. My mom, you know, we had it cool. They were working. Mm -hmm. My granddad, everybody was getting money. Man, when I went to St. Louis for the first summer, I remember when I was young, my daddy side. And like you said, anybody that know, if you haven't seen the episode, just go to watch Gangland, and it's an episode of St. Louis. <laughs> and so in that, they talk about the horseshoe. The horseshoe posse was a group of bloods. My grandma's house was right in the smack center of the horseshoe. So when you look at the formation of the horseshoe in the streets, Clara here, and you got Terry, and this is my grandma's house. So without to say, my daddy side and what we grew up with, this is what it was out there. So when you come sure. out there, you gotta, sure. you gotta know that. So like, and I was just telling him, like, you know, like, I don't claim or do none of that. Yeah, but yeah, when sure. I go there, it's, oh, you DJ, you little DJ, you big five son or something, yeah, something. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah, it just, yeah, you know, sure. the first sure. couple of summers, it was just like a lot of adjusting. And it's like, damn, that's really where you, where I learned the toughness part. Cause I got my grandma, you know, I might come in the house with my cousins or somebody pushing me down or jumping me or something because I'm from another state. I come mm -hmm. in crying. It's, you want me to whoop your ass, you can go out there and fight back type Straight shit. Up. So I'm just Straight like, damn, this is how they like, it's, it was, that was the norm. So it's mm -hmm. like, you learn how to fight back. You learn, like, that's the first place I seen. I seen somebody visually, like, with my two eyes get shot from about here to where they're lying at. Shot in the head three times. And I remember calling my mama, something I wasn't supposed to do. She called my daddy, cousin. I send my son back right now. Like, 
the shit was just crazy. But as I got older, you know, you get more understanding. I'm just like, I'm more closer to that side of the family now because you see, and what I do like about it, that mentality, it's a, that's really where I got the entrepreneurship side from. Because like, you come up in the house, like I said, my grandma's, we didn't have no table, we eating on the newspaper. Yeah. Didn't have a shower, we got to boil water on the darn stove, pour it in the tub and take baths. But by the time you see your big cousins, your older brother get 14, 15, yeah. and they ready to hop off the porch, yeah. money start looking different in the house. So it's like, and I ain't working no job, I can't go here. So I'm like, damn. Then you start to learn the ropes and stuff. Fast forward, now we in the predicament. And like, like I said, everything happened for a reason. God put them through what they did, so I ain't have to do. But 10 years of time, people start getting knocked off. Funerals start happening, 11 years here, five years here. You learn certain codes and stuff you live by, but it shape you to where now the talks we have is, we talk business now. And it's, it's the same concept, it's the same mentality with that game you was playing. But now we just doing it in a different light to where you ain't even really got to look over your shoulder no more. It's, a, it's different snakes and, and sharks in this game. But I ain't got to come or you ain't got to come strapped up to this thing and worry about who yeah. going to make out in the shootout. Now yeah, we got to yeah, just be yeah, thinking yeah. now. So this is, oh, can I out thank you game to, mm -hmm. to get to where we going? So it's like I wouldn't trade it for the world. Because, again, like you say, we, man, shit, we used to be off. 15 deep in there, man, me and my cousin, and we always had fun, so it's like, you wouldn't even think, we talk now, like, bro, we ain't had nothing, but you hide and seek, you making you fun see, out of you nothing, you, like, like you said, you can be a kid, so it's like, yeah, <clears throat> the, the bad part about it, once you cross a certain age, and when we become adults, life get hard, because now you got to get money, you got bills and shit, yeah, but like, when yeah. we was kids, dog, like, we had a ball, yeah, bro, like, bro. I love ball. being out the hood, I tell you, man, like, that's where the most fun at, to bro. me. Now, yeah. I, you know, it's different times. Now, Absolutely. I wouldn't want my kids to come up in it. But for me, I had the best time of my life when I was outside and, and chilling in that environment. Like, so it was just like, it's dangerous, but you don't even look at it like that because yeah. it's like this, you ain't nobody else staying nowhere else. Yeah. So, like, this is all we know. So, it's like, this, it was the norm. Nah, it's definitely, bro. And, and I could definitely attest to that. Like, bro, I had a great childhood. You know, yeah. I, some people, you ask them now, and they're like, dang, like, I ain't do that. I ain't get a chance to do that. Like, dog, I had a great childhood like like you said hide and seek man we, we, we had the water gun fights all every yeah, summer everything man like, hey, we're gonna go get a whole pack of water guns mm -hmm. we all out there joint going crazy that. man hunt, all that stuff remember that, remember they mama set up a whole food fight we had a food fight, fight outside the crib fight, bro it probably was That's like 40 it. deep yeah, out there joint. Was, everybody deep, bro yeah. from our street to their street and some some apartments that was right up man everybody was down there drunk yeah. Man, the girls and stuff tied their hair with paper bags. Yeah. Dog, we had a food yeah. fight. We, we was made creative, stuff. Bro. Like, we was Come creative, on, bro. Like we used to do crazy. Like, the mattresses out there, man, flipping bro. the stuff, being the clubhouses. I used to be mad. Them boys could flip. I can never do a backflip, bro. I can never do one. But you know, I did, bro. Childhood was great. Yeah, Childhood was, was great. Like I wouldn't have traded it for nothing. Okay. I definitely wouldn't have traded it for nothing. But it, it 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 makes me think of something else, though, bro. Like, um, some of the stuff that we may have saw growing up, you know what I mean, or been a part of, um, it could have done some things to us mentally, you know what I mean, and in this day and age, mental health is a, is a huge topic, especially amongst black men, you feel what I'm saying, so, like, do you think um, you guys suffer from mental health, you know what I mean, being, being uh, a black person, being a black man, being black fathers, or do you think, um, or are you just aware of it and understand, you know what I mean, like the importance of mental health now and why mental health matters? I start with you. Yeah, I think I understand it more um, because, you know, facing certain traumas uh, coming up, man, like when I lost my brother, man, it was, it was like I, I lost Superman. I used to look at my brother like he was, like he was Superman. Um, and then just to see him, you know, get killed, man, and. I remember like it was yesterday, I got a call from my brother and he was like, uh, man, little Eric, are you a man? And I was like, yeah, what's up? Why are you asking me that, man? He was like, are you a man? I was like, yeah. He said, uh, man, our brother dead. I said, man, shut up, I ain't trying to hear that. You know, I'm thinking he playing like, man, I ain't trying to hear that. So, um, you know, he, he called me again. He was like, little Eric, listen to me. He gone, man. So I remember, you know, running in the house to my mom. And I was like, Mom, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go over Boo Boo's house. You know, they say he got killed. And, um, you know, we go over there, man. And uh, 
And as soon as we hit the corner to go to his house, I seen a bunch of, you know, blue lights, blue and red lights blinking. And um, that's when it hit me, man. I was like, you know, this this real. Um, then seeing my brother land up under that sheet, man, and, um, you know, that stuff like that, it still beat me up to this day. But, you know, I have my outlets. You know, you have to find an outlet when you deal with certain traumas like that. Um, you have to have an outlet, man, because if you don't, you're going to run yourself crazy. Um, then, you know, lightning struck the same place again. I lost my other brother, and it was the the same thing, man. Um, I got a call late night. That's why, that's I, a, a trauma I have. Like, if somebody calls me late night, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. So if I get a call late night, like, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm shaking. So when I hear my phone ringing at night, I pick it up, and I, I already answer in a panic. That's a trauma that I, I deal with and I, that I, I face. Um, and the same thing, man, like, you know, those crime scenes will never leave my mind. Yeah. The smell, I remember the smell of chlorine from them trying to, trying to clean up the blood. Um, I remember that like it was yesterday. Um, and then just having to see my niece and um, my sisters and my nephews go through that, man, it was something that I can't explain. Like, I can still hear the cries. I still hear the, the screams. And I used to have a dream. I was telling somebody this the other day. Um, I used to have a dream of, of the devil saying, I got your brother. And I used to have it all the time. And I used to have dreams of the crime scene all the time. And you know, I've seen, I've seen a, a guy get killed right in front of me, man. It was this, this kid um, at the store, man. And he, he shot the dude. And we was right there trying to resuscitate the dude. I watched this man take his last breath. So over a chain. And I watched him take his last breath. I was 14, and I'm sitting right there trying to help resuscitate somebody with blood on my hands. And you know, that's that's trauma. That's traumatizing as a kid. You know, seeing people die. You know, especially yeah. people that you're close to. Um, so that's why I do what I do now with the kids. Is is try to figure out what's wrong with them and tell them, hey, you need an outlet. You have to have it. Yeah. Boxing was my outlet. I went in there and I. I took all, I used to cry before every fight. You can ask anybody. I used to get down and I pray and I would look up and I would start crying. I know my, the people across me probably like, yo, something wrong with this dude. Mm -hmm. I used to cry. Um, but now, man, I've, I've learned that, you know, now that God take, took my brothers away from me, I, I don't feel like I would have that same purpose and drive that I do now to try to get these kids to put the gun. Down. I wouldn't have that drive no more like I do now. So I feel like, you know, God needed them more, and he needed me to fulfill the purpose down here Absolutely. that he set for me. Absolutely. What about you, Jake? Mm, I don't know. My thing, mine different. Like, I be kind of numb to it. Like, I'm straight. Like, I be, I don't really, I, I'm aware of it. Like, I'm aware of it, and I, I the the passion inside of me, I always care. I, I care about others more than myself. So I want to make sure you straight. I want to make sure he's straight. He said, anytime, like, I'm asking if other people are straight all the time, yeah. cause in my mind I'm like, I'm cool, and I don't know. Again, it can go back to like I can piggyback on my upbringing. So my granddaddy, like to give a synopsis, was like, that's my favorite person in the world. That was my yeah. dog. He was raised me, but it was like he brought us up on tough love. When I say tough love, it just ain't like people say tough love. Like I can count on one hand how many compliments I heard my granddaddy ever give me in my life. Yeah. Outside of that, it was. You ain't shit, yeah. you lazy, you yeah. this, acting like a bitch. Like, it was stuff like that, but yeah. to him, it was, he was doing it out of love. Was and it, way, yeah, it was, time, but it, and it new. took for him to, so when he died, I kind of was just stuck. I was like, damn, like I lost my dog. And then I never forget walking around the hood or at his funeral, people coming up to me like, man, your granddaddy thought the world of you. And some of the stuff they used to tell me he was saying, I would look and be like, you talking I about my same granddaddy? I, I ain't never. never. Like, I only seen my granddaddy cry once, and it was when he was about to, like, the last time before he was about to pass. Him. I, was, I was living here. I went to Virginia to visit him. Yeah. And he was, like, he just broke down because he couldn't move like he used to. He used to do carpentry, used to do, mm -hmm. you know, everything, whatever. So the fact that he couldn't maneuver like that, he was just, like, he broke down. And I was like, damn, I ain't know you had this in you. Like, but, like I said, after I lost, but again, like, if he was that person, used to bring crackheads on the job, you know, mm -hmm. 
pay them more than he would pay himself to do jobs. Mm-hmm. Like that was my granddaddy. All the kids come out there, he would make sure you straight. So I think I kind of developed that from him to where it's like, even now, like, I ain't, he ain't gotta be my friend. We ain't gotta be cool. I'm all right with that. I just be making sure other people straight. So it's like, at funerals, like, I don't really cry or nothing like that. So I wouldn't even call it trauma. I just be cool. I gotta understand it now to be like, I'm comfortable. I know me. So it's like, and I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. So it's like knowing that and being all right with myself and knowing who I am, it helped me navigate. So I'd rather make sure like, world straight anybody I encounter I want to make sure y'all straight because it's like shit I got it you got it I don't trip off of nothing like that most definitely nah that's that's I appreciate both of y'all man for being vulnerable you know what I mean because I don't know man what's the difference back then you know what I mean like this the, the way that they saw to raise us versus the things that we're seeing and learning about now you know yeah. what I mean like it's a lot of new things coming out I wouldn't even say new but just a lot of things that we're being introduced yeah, to yeah, for the first yeah, time yeah. you know what I mean and just understanding like the importance of mental health and more specifically black mental health man right. because a lot of us did come from those households you know what i mean like we didn't really look at it as a bad thing yeah. but you know what i mean like the older you get and you know what i mean the other stuff that's happening in life you're starting to realize like dog it is a lot of trauma that we holding inside you know what i mean it's a lot of ptsd yeah. you know what i mean seeing somebody die at 14 years old dog that's not normal mm-hmm. no matter how you look at it that's not normal you know what i mean so it's just being able to come to terms with that being able to speak that being able to learn the language being able to have more conversations like this like three cats that we could talk sports which we could talk rap we could talk all this other stuff but we also gonna talk about the mind right. mm-hmm. you feel what i'm saying so it's just it, it, it's just all like normalizing all of that yeah. you know what i mean and i think um you know people like us we just continue um uh, to to help assist in writing that narrative man and bringing that stuff to light man slowly but surely like we'll bring something uh good to the world no, right? sure. something that the world needs man yeah. and uh before we get off this topic yeah i do want to ask you man like because i don't know what it's like to lose a brother bro um you know what i mean and not only lose a brother but you know to think that you've gotten all that stuff behind you, you lose another one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then to think that you got all that behind you, you know, you, you start a beautiful family, you got beautiful kids and all that other stuff, man. But now your best friend get incarcerated, bro. Like somebody that you looked up to is really a third brother, bro. Like, like how do you deal with that? Uh, I mean, I just try to, you know, make sure that he is, he is okay, that his mind state is, is where it needs to be because that was, that still is my 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 third brother. It's my Absolutely, my best man. friend in the in the whole world. I give him the shirt off my. I give him my last man. You know, my biggest thing was was I felt like I deserved to be in there more than him mm. because I feel like we should be trading places. I feel like he should be out here. Survivor's guilt. Yeah, and I should be in there because he never done a bad thing in the world, man. I remember. When I was I was hustling, man, and you know I was going up to school to see him all the time, and I remember, you know, he said, man, you know, can you, you know, give me something so I can make some money up here? I said, nah, but I can give you some money. Yeah. So I'm not ready to let you make the same stupid decisions that I'm making. Yeah. But you know, I just I always send him books, um, to keep his mind going, and and really, man, like when I talked to him, I, it was not too long ago, uh, probably about two months ago. And I started talking to him about God. I started saying things that he's never heard me say before. I tell him, you know, the journey that I'm on, what I'm doing with the, the youth out here. And I was talking to him about God, and he was like, man, you you changed, man. Yeah. He was like, you changed. You're not the same person that you used to be. Yeah. And I was like, nah, man, I, I, I found my purpose from God. God gave me my purpose. He put it in my mind. And he put it in my heart. And right now, God is just... I might not have everything that I want, but God has given me every tool that I need to fulfill my purpose. And it's clear. So I remember him calling his mom um, and telling his mom, she, you know, because she told me what he said. He said, "Mom, you, you need to call. You need to call Eric. Like, he sound different. Like, yeah, yeah. some, some, he different. Like, you need to just yeah. call and talk to him." So I remember her calling and telling me, and she was like, "You know, Jr. told me, you know, I, I need to call you." You sound different. You talking yeah. different, and um, you know, I started talking to her about God and you know what I'm doing, and you know, I remember her and just just thanking God over the phone because a lot of, you know, them didn't think I was gonna make it out or didn't see me 
sure. doing the things that I'm doing right now. And, you know, I just remember her praising God over the phone. And <laughs> that's like that's my dope. that's like my 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 second mom, man. And that's dope. she always held me accountable. You know, I remember, you know, me coming up and her saying, you know, if you're gonna be doing that stuff. You can't be around here. And I wanted to be around my best friend so much, I would contemplate just leaving it all alone because that was my best friend. So, you know, I just try to make sure I I keep his mind stimulated and give him hope for something to look for. I started a nonprofit and I made him half owner of it. So, you know, when I told him about it, uh, the nonprofit's called Fight For Your Life. And, you know, he, um, I told him about that, man. He just was so excited, man. He was like, man, you really did that for me, bro? I said, yeah. Who? wouldn't I do it for you? You know, you my, you my brother, man. And um, so I just try to, you know, always stay upbeat and not try to be down. When I'm when I'm down thinking about him, I'll call his mom. Yeah. I don't I do not do that with him on the phone. I, I just try to keep his mind, you yeah. know, on, on all positivity. Absolutely, man, absolutely. Tay, talk about, um, so you grew up, you know what I mean? Cam Chancellor, his brother, his family. You, you, you saw the development of, you know, what we all know as Cam Chancellor. Yeah. But you saw the, the young dude, the kid, how he was going to school. You saw his brother, you saw, like, you saw everything like that. Like, kind of talk about that, bro, like just being around that type of greatness, but seeing it before any of us did, yeah. you know what I mean? And, like, did that do anything to you, you know what I mean, as far as a ball player, just as far as, like, somebody that want to make it out the same place? Like, talk about that. Nah, for sure. So, like, when, I, when we came in and, like, met, I think it was like my coming out of my senior year in high school, me and bro clicked. So you know we from we from different areas. So mm-hmm. my hood, they here, you know we from a different way. So you, you heard the name, it was the buzz. But like me and King became like as soon as we met coming in off the state, we met each other. He knew what hood I was from. I knew what hood we were from. We had a mutual friend, yeah. and we just clicked and been inseparable. And it's crazy because around the same time, man, I'm from over there town. Like we all, mm-hmm. everybody just mm-hmm. formed a little click. So it really started with us. And then you would see like the work ethic that Cam was doing from afar. Like he'll be the type that can go out and party and stay out two, three, four in the morning and Still wake back up at seven and go do his workout and gonna be the first to finish, the the last to stay. Like I don't know, I tell people, man, certain people you just gotta accept that they got that it. They got it. And bro. God give you they that it. it and it's like he was determined, and from what I do know about their background and like getting the close to King, like and how they come up, they got a documentary. Check it out. Like Cam came with man of the house early, yeah. so I think his 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 exactly. why was a little bit different than yeah. the average person. So he knew when he got a taste of that, he gonna let me go. And it was crazy to see like when he got drafted. I forget what grade he was in, but like. The change, man, like the discipline, it was something I'm like, I ain't never seen before outside of like now. So at that time, it's like, you know, we still playing around. We yeah, joke, we yeah. can't take shit serious. Like, yeah, we was yeah. all. You kicking, you, yeah. yeah. But like, he was so focused, man. And it was like, it did. I ain't gonna lie. Like, and I, while I'm playing, meeting him, and I tell him all the time, I text him, like, but seeing you or being around, you did do something. But like, it, it, it was a sense of like, all right. It's a time for playing, it's a time for being serious. It's a time for business, it's a time for something else. Like, and he was always handling the business. You look at him now, like, life after football, he's still handling oh, business. Book so the it's business, like, bro. Book it, the business. He, he definitely was different. And I think that helped all of us, me, his brother, his other brothers, my friends. Like, yeah. it gave us a sense of understanding of, like, he was the first one to make it out to show you like it's it's more to it than here at the crib and VA. It's more to it the life than this. He he talks constantly and if you pay attention, he's giving you a lot of game. Like game, well, you making sure your kids kids straight. If you wanna be into this, you wanna do into this networking relationships. That's why I say like he'll say a lot without even saying a lot. When we out yeah, chilling yeah. and we having a good time playing cards, shooting dice, doing whatever, you always have that conversation with him. And he may give you a little tap and say, all right, now tighten up. And it is just, it's that, and you will be like, all right, let me go on my shit. You got no like, choice but to respect you. got to because his resume is already out like. for itself, bro. On, bro. Like, speak for itself. So, now nah, shout out my dog Cam and shout Def- out Spain. Like, Def- his brother, that's my, that's like my whole heart. That's my dog. Like, we sure, right and left. Anybody that know him, know me, yeah. go to Norfolk State. We just, like, again, we just talking about, like, you ain't going to 
bring them North State and they be like King to take. So that's just really like it was it was good times and it's still good times. We just older now and doing the family thing and kicking. Nah, definitely shout out the boys, man. So, man, we finna get into it now. Football player boxer. I need to know. Top three boxers, mm -hmm. top three football players, and then on top of the top three, who is your goat? Damn. Uh, <laughs> Look, where we gonna top, go with it? Top, top three is, is is Floyd, man. Floyd, I got Floyd. Ooh. Ooh. I got Roy Jones, and I got Muhammad Ali. Uh, I probably got <laughs> I probably got Ali at number one because one for what he stood for. Uh, he 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 stood for some kind, but as far as the, the I say Ali was the best fighter. As far as the best boxer, got to give it to Floyd. So so explain that to what, what does that mean? But explain to the viewers like what's the difference between a boxer and a fighter? A boxer is somebody that's gonna take their time and they gonna they gonna outbox you. They're not gonna slug with you. A fighter is that somebody that that can go out there and, and slug with you for twelve rounds and and, and win the fight. Um, and then, uh, like I said, Roy Jones. Roy Jones was probably my favorite fighter coming out. Uh, Roy Jones I used to come at you like this. Yeah. Like, yeah. bro, like hands down hands. here and everything, so, bro. I used to try to uh, imitate a lot of what Roy Jones did. Uh, a lot of times when I used to go to tournament, tournaments, they used to call me Baby Roy because yeah. I used to imitate a lot of the things. Roy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the things that he did. Ain't no Baby Roy. Bro. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> Dang. You better go. Uh, <laughs> You better go through Roy. You better nah, go he said hard. Don't feel hard. He we got down. He yeah. did shit. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I even had the, the Jordan, his his uh Jordan branded uh boxes boxing shoes. Damn. Um but that was that was probably my, my favorite. I used to really enjoy rock, watching Roy Jones, man. Nah, no doubt. Tell me what you got for me, bro. Shit, I gotta go. Prime time. Woo! Deion Sanders. Woo! <laughs> Mike Vick, that, that my, that's one of man, my shout out seven. You gotta, man. you gotta do Mike Vick, Mike Vick, and then I say it's between. Man, I don't know. When I was young, I used to always watch either Barry Sanders or Marshall Falk highlights, bro. Them two, like, them two the game. I used to watch their highlights. I'm into like, I like when people can make people look stupid on the field, and the shit they used to do. That shit just used to look hard. And yeah. then Vic just being the quarterback, he was us. Like, it was just he like. Was us, bro. He was yeah. us. And the shit he did at Tech. I'm looking at how, like, yeah, that Boston man, College game, man. Bro. That shit was crazy. I'm like, bro. He was different. It's different. He, he definitely was. And then Lionel, he turned, coming there, do rag. Like, thugged out. Like, that shit was just like, damn. Yeah, he changed the game, man, for real. That's Rick, that's my favorite player. Vic, the yeah. favorite. Vic, Vic, then, like I said, prime time. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. For boxers, <clears throat> my favorite probably be Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray. That's that's my favorite, but I ain't gonna lie, the GOAT is Floyd. Mm. I think the GOAT is Floyd, yeah, but just my favorite as far as style, yeah. you know what I mean? Just poise, all mm. that. Like Sugar Ray was like poetry to me. He, he but was, like, man. I just sit there watching his highlights all man, that day. man could throw a 20 punch combination, dog. like quick, dog. Like he, if, if it weren't for those three, like he was, he was gonna be right there, bro. Yeah. He was he right there. He then probably, you got Mike right there too. Yeah. What? So it's I'm just uh, nah, Mike. I'm definitely a trip. I like the quick Mike, shit. Mike different. going there yeah. and gonna knock your Dog. ass up. Yeah. Mike understand Mike, Mike, Mike so was like for me. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I want somebody that's gonna end the joint quick. Man, nah, nah, facts. Here, facts. 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 I, I like Floyd just because of no, Floyd to go. Floyd hard. Floyd, Floyd, he, Floyd to go. He really broke boxing down into a science. Like, yeah. I like know. him just because he money made well. He yeah. money yeah. made money made well. I'm yeah. talking about pretty boy Floyd and money made well. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I mean, he used to he used to go out there and throw to no, him he's before. Not, nah, Floyd but he's used pretty to boy, bro. Pretty boy used to throw. Yeah, Diego Corrales, go go watch that fight. Uh, Arturo yeah. Gotti. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, like, back back in the day, Floyd used to throw, bro. No, no, no. But the name of the game, though, is unboxing. Hit and don't get hit. Hit and don't yeah. get hit. Nah, you know? fact, I ain't gonna lie, though, bro. Mike probably make my top three. I, I don't know. Mike Hall. Mike, 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 he was just too wrong, bro. Football wise, though, the GOAT, Tom Brady, bro. No Tom, question. Tom, I, don't, I don't think it's a question, bro, especially now at this point. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I just think what he's done on the football field, bro, like, I honestly don't know if it'll ever get matched. Like, yeah. This nah, kid is different. I'm just biased. He's yeah, the nah, best nah, player I've put on fact, fact, but yeah. I'm biased. Like, Tom. 
you can't argue what he's done. And then to come in from Michigan at the round he come came in to yeah. get the way he had to do it with the weapons he had, like, nah, time that dude for real. But yeah. I ain't gonna lie, one of my favorite uh, football players, I'm definitely gonna be biased with this too. I'm gonna go running back. It's a tie, bro. It's a tie, and it's a tie between Barry Sanders yeah. and AP. Oh, yeah, okay. AP was hard. This, this, AP was that dude, bro. bro. Barry Sanders was the absolute best at the running back position, in my opinion, because, dog, he could do whatever with well, whatever you gave exactly. to him. Like, yeah. dog, my man could go run behind this weight right here yeah. and still go give you 100. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, the art of making people miss, mm -hmm. he had it all. He had home running ability. He, he could do it all. But, yeah. like, Barry Sanders was just different. Like, definitely was. You know what I mean? And he got out the game when he was at his, his, his height. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. And AP, bro, like, when I first started seeing him, like, I used to watch Eric Dickerson highlights a lot, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, when I first started seeing Adrian Peterson, bro, it was just like, dog. Like, you mean yeah, to tell uh, me, like, a yeah, cat like yeah. this running the ball? Yeah. Come on, AP bro. Like, was different, bro. Was different. This dude ain't human, bro. Yeah. He was different. Like, he was when he came dude. back from the injury, bro, and and did what he did. Dog, he different, I bro. I wouldn't even want to talk or nothing like that. Like, come on, coach. And he a better dude, too, bro. I had a chance yeah. to play with him, man. You know what I mean? Being around him on certain mm -hmm. occasions, bro, like, not for great things to say about dude for sure. Like yeah. that was the best for him and whatever he got going on. So, yeah, but speaking AP, about go, yeah, shout out AP man. Speaking about ghost though, you brought him up. Prime man, Prime been in the news lately, dog. You know what mm. I mean? Like we all know he took the head coaching job at uh, Colorado just now, but mm. prior to that, he was the head coach at, at Jackson State. Uh, and for those who don't know, everybody should if you're paying attention to the world. But you know what I mean? Jackson State is the HBCU. Um, Prime went there a few years back, you know, brought all types of recognition there. Right. You know what I mean? Brought all types of players. Had the number yeah. one player. Um, Country. You know what I mean? Uh, two chips. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Did they win a day up? Anybody know? I don't know. I just they were winning, though. They, they was winning. winning. They was they winning. Was they winning. Was winning. Yeah, yeah, we're going to check on that. We're going to check on that. But, uh, 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 yeah, bro, like, just what he's done, you know what I mean, at the collegiate level, at the HBCU level, mm -hmm. uh, at the national level with attention, like just everything he's done, bro. But then for him to go and make that move, man, you know, and go to Colorado in the fashion that he did yeah. and say, we here, mm -hmm. I'm here, we here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dog, what's y'all thoughts? What's y'all thoughts, man? man I like, can't even be mad at him though, bro. Like, I don't know. And it ain't even just, cause I went to an HBCU, so you know how I feel about it. I'm I'm all, yeah, I'm a rep it in here. Y'all went to Terry, I went, but I'm HBCU. Without like, I love it. Went and traded for the world. Had a ball at it. But I don't think what well, people got what he did in that amount of time. And I get it from both spectrums. Like if you got people that's diehard HBCU, they feel like oh he's supposed to roll it out. He could have did this. He could have did this. But again, the way I think, look at what he did, did do yeah, with the yeah, resources yeah. he had. That man took money out of his own pocket, built a locker room that they would have never got if he wouldn't have came. Yeah. This man from Alabama, Florida State, whatever, he bought celebrities that wouldn't dog. You would never see at a football game. Dog, bro. USC like, couldn't even do that. Come on now, like and they live basically. in their backyard. Bro, you had come on, Gilly, bro. Follow. Like, Key Glock, Dolph, Snoop, Rick Ross, like these kids got the experience. So at what point, like, when do you say, look what this man did for these kids type stuff? Like, they had the best time of their life. They had better time than any of us probably. I'm like, man, that what? shit was like, I'm watching it and I'm getting hyped for them. So Bro. it's like the, the good definitely out the way the bad. Then you don't know what the off the field stuff he was going through. Like he the type of person you got you gotta respect him for being stand up. I really don't think he even exposing everything that's probably really going not. on. Yeah, he just facts, said, you know facts. what? Yeah. I'ma take these kids and I gotta go to a better I tried. Bro, but he I gave y'all two cha championships and then like I said, going to a HBC when you win them championships sometime, like at a big school, you might get bulk of the money, go back to your athletics. Yeah. I know for a fact Bro. they was Dispersing it all over because you already you ain't making a lot. So when you got that money coming in, it's going here, 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 and he not getting the piece of the pie that he was supposed to be getting. Yeah, that bro and like hit the bigger picture with him was he wanted his assistant coaches to be in a position at some point yeah. to become head coaches. He wanted the exposure for everybody on that team to potentially get professional jobs if they wanted, power five jobs yeah, if they exactly. wanted, mm -hmm. or. Big HBCU jobs yeah. they want, you know what I mean? Players, he wanted them to get drafted, all types of stuff like that. Like, bro. So it's him just like, standing there another five, ten, it wouldn't have did, like people say, if, if 
other NFL guys want to come down and coach, they're going to do it regardless. It's not, it don't take him staying there to say, oh, hey, let me go coach here too. Let me go coach. No, nah, if you want to do it, you're going to do it. If not, mm-hmm. not. But you got to, that man, he got a, everybody, you got a family to feed. You got a family to buy. Yeah. You got your own legacy. At the end of the day, you your own person. And he's doing right by it. Like, you can't. He ain't tripping off what people say. Like you said, like God lead him. Like yeah. God lead, God gonna leave you as a lead you as an individual to whatever you Never supposed proud, to do man. in life. So and it's he like, makes he it very clear when he yeah. talk. And, and my thing with it though, bro, like I ain't gonna lie, my my initial feelings was I would have wanted him to ride it out at least until he could have got that first class graduating or his sons about it. They always I wanted to see them play a P five school. That's my only yeah. thing I want. I wanted yeah, to, I see like to see them play a like big school to see how it would compare with his recruiting class. I would have liked the to see that thing. too. I would have liked to see that too. But he even said it though like they weren't ready to play no Alabama or nothing like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because of the trends we all know that. Like mm-hmm. the recruiting is different when it comes to that. Skill yeah. players skill players are skill players. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. But like just as far as like those resources and all that type of stuff. But like yeah but I just would have wanted to see him ride it out a couple more years but Am I mad at the decision that he made? Absolutely not. You know what I mean? Like, I think I'm able to separate my initial opinion and what I wanted versus understanding, like, my man had to do what was best for him. Mm-hmm. Everybody like, Dion don't need the money, Dion. Man, come on, man. Y'all count that man's pockets at this yeah, point. Like, right. and it ain't the fact that if he needed it or not. Like, Slim, what he's about to do, he's taking so many people with him, <laughs> taking so many college uh, players with him, coaches with him. Like, He's giving more opportunities. The guy that's the head coach now, Coach TC, shout out him. Mm-hmm. Like, he, I don't know if he would have ever been in that position that soon. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You know what I mean? But now, this cat, he got the blueprint. You know what I mean? It, it's his job, it's his duty now to keep it rolling. Like, mm-hmm. everybody that's that has been supporting JS, um, JSU and all that, like, everybody that wanted to support other HBCUs that's been supporting HBCUs, yeah. don't stop. Like, we want to continue to shine that light. You feel what I'm saying? And like, we can't put it all on one person. Side. You talk about racism. All right, say, for instance, he's about to go to Colorado, and we really about to see now, he's about to bring our culture our into culture. a predominantly on, white bro. school so now they can see. So then when you see the reaction, maybe this might bring the world or the state of Colorado at least kind of closer because now it's like you understand he ain't changing who he is he's just gonna bring that very clear here. Yeah. and now it's like dang they get the front row seat to be like okay this is why they yeah. are the way they are this is why they do certain things Fact, so it, yeah. you got to look at the good that's gonna come out of yeah. it Fact, what you think? I, I just think it's it's more than you know than he's he's letting be known like yeah. I feel like it was some things that that happened that, closed door. yeah that that he uh he tried to, you know, wait it out and, and see if it was going to work out, and it just didn't. So I don't blame his decision at all. Um, yeah, 100%. You know, like like you said, like, God going to lead you where, where he, he wants you to be at. Um, and But he, he did a lot, man. He did a lot for the school while he was there. So how can you blame him? Like, you know, stuff probably didn't work out behind the scenes. I'm like, I'm pretty sure, like, stuff just didn't work out behind the scenes. And um, I would have liked him to – Stay there a little longer, but you know, I don't blame him for making the decision. Like everybody made it a big deal, but I never like like nah, Dion shouldn't did that. I won't never like that. No, hundred percent, bro. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah. But it's done now. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. He gonna go and do what he got to do, and that's just what it is. Like, take so, it or leave it. Yeah, that just happened. So both of y'all, man, both of y'all been blessed. Um, you know what I mean with with, with kids. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. Tay, you just had your first one. E to win yeah man um you got sons you got a daughter kind of just speak on that man like uh because we, we get this tag and we get this stigma a lot that you know fathers aren't in their kids life black fathers are in their kids life you know what i mean and you guys got it from two total different situations that like you right. raising two boys in this world you raising a girl in this world like i could only imagine i'm sure it's both you know have these challenges but like yeah. kind of talk on that man like is there something specific that you want to leave with them or like when you approach work every day, is there something that, that you going into it with the mindset of? Or just kind of touch on that, man. So, you know, I I feel like God blessed me with two two sons because you know He He fulfilled that void. He uh, filled that void with uh, losing my brothers. That's dope. So um, I feel That's like dope. He gave me two sons for a reason. Um, and you know, I just try to lead by example because, like I said, I didn't have a father figure in the household. Mm-hmm. So I really learned how to be a father from. From, from my father, because mm-hmm. I knew what I didn't want my kids to experience. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to have my kids uh, looking in the stands, you know, for their dad, wondering is he gonna be there. 
Yeah. I'm gonna be at every game. Every game. You know, you ain't sure. gonna have to look for me because you're gonna hear me because I'm yeah. gonna be out there screaming for my son. So um, I really learned how to be a father from him. And um, my mom and my aunt, my aunt Didi, like they, they really held it down, man. Like they showed me what it was like to, you know, be a be a good parent. Um, they really did whatever they could for me, man. Um, coming up, um, and then it's my brothers, man. He, he, uh, they both thought of their kids like as as their world, man. And you know, just seeing how they cherish their kids, I wanted to cherish my kids the same way. And um, my son's mom, like when I say like, she really the goat. Like yeah. she is really the goat, man. I can't give her yes. enough praise. Absolutely. Um, like she really holds it down, and I really learned how to be a better, better parent from her, and she, I'm older than her. Yeah. But I learned how to be a better parent from from her, just watching how she stays on top of everything. Like, okay. some I'll forget something, she be like, you know, you know you got this, or, yeah. you know, she, she, she just on point, man, so. Um, Blue. Yeah. Blue. Shout yeah. her out too, man. Even yeah. though she went to the, to the wrong high school, we gonna hold that yeah. against you. Shout her out, yeah. man, yeah. for sure. For sure. But about you, too. So man, I don't, I can't even fathom how somebody with me and want to feel their kids like. And like right. I said, I don't judge. Everything can be different, but yeah. it's just like, like I said, mine new. Mm -hmm. So you know, she be seven months Monday, and it be on some like, bro, the weight of the world can be on the nigga's shoulders, bro. This shit can be going yeah. like, right. what's about to happen, whatever. Yeah. She at the point now it'd be so lit. When she hit the door open. She already know what time it is. As soon as I come around that corner, she in her walk or whatever, she look back, light up, get it doing a little happy dance, and I'm just like, forget it's everything, joy, bro. bro. It's the mm -hmm. best thing in the world. So best it's like, in the world, dog. bro, it, it it really for me like having a girl that make you want to go harder. I'm fortunate mm -hmm. enough, my dog Keenan Campbell, like my right hand man, he got mm -hmm. a daughter, so I, I'm watching him. You know, his daughter one now. I get to watch him front row do his thing. My other dog, my boy Turk, he just had a daughter. So like a lot of my boys, we done got stuck with girls. Like a couple of them got boys too, but we get to raise our girls together. Not then on dope. the flip side of that, that's like dope, the mentorship here, like y'all know he work out here at Antoine. Like seeing mm -hmm. Antoine James and he got a girl. So like- Shout out Antoine James. Yeah, yeah man, that's my Shout dog. Yeah. So it's like seeing how he be with his girl, man, and just having that ability to like, you won't, Daddy's girl to be like, I can come to you for anything. Anything. You ain't, good, I ain't about to take. Ugly, yeah, you know? like so. It's a, it's a motivation, man. It's a, it's something I'm looking forward to. It's bittersweet though, cause you be like, bro, I don't want you to get old out yeah, here, cause I get to think about, here, look, man. I be cutting dry. I think about how I am or what I come was. On, I'm bro. like, oh, come on, shit. bro. Like, we gotta girl, pass. We gotta what? pass. <laughs> I need a boy. I need a boy next. I need somebody that's gonna come over. And, and I can't be out here beating up little kids. So shoot. Nah, but no, it's, it's the best thing. Like he said, to piggyback, like her mama, bro, Jada. Like my brother Jada, hold it down. Man, like shout out she Jada, man. really yeah. like. Shout she, out Jada from Detroit. You yeah, heard me. from the D. <laughs> Crazy, ass. but it's like she doing her thing with it. And she makes, like you said, she makes my job way easier because she doing everything. Like my baby learning. She's on track. Like she goes to the doctor. They be like she advanced. And I'm like, shoot, she with her mama all day. I'm here working, grinding. So it's like, that's 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 that was a big piece too. Like having a child with the right person. The right person. So it's like, that's man, it, that's it. that was that was a blessing for me. And again, you know, it don't it don't happen like that for everybody. Like you said, we I grew up the same way. My mom and my dad ain't work out, but hey, yeah. we here. So it's yeah, like, no doubt, no doubt. man, nah, that shit dope, bro. I, I wouldn't do. trade for the world. Yeah, man, y'all boys, man, I, I look up to y'all, man, and you know what I mean, hopefully, potentially one day, man, I'll be in the same shoes, but it's a blessing, man, you know what yeah. I mean, like, just to see active fathers around, and you know what I mean, bringing y'all kids around, like, you got yeah. little E in there running around right now while we doing a, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, interview, yeah. he tell them to go out there and sit, you don't see him no more, like, yeah. dog, it's just, like, he got that much respect for him, you know what I mean, yeah. it's just like, dog, it's a beautiful sight to see, because yeah. so many times you always hear bad like oh he ain't that dead be he ain't you know mm -hmm. what i mean like mm -hmm. man forget all that like we changing narratives dog like that, we changing narratives man yeah. so yeah bro so man y'all y'all fellas man y'all y'all have grown to have this uh friendship partnership been co-workers man we kick it we talk we get deep all that stuff man kind of like um what's the dynamics of that man kind of getting thrown into this position um not being forced to accept each other but you mm -hmm. know being able to like 
co I don't know how to say it, like co work. You know what co-work. I'm saying? Co-work. Yeah, co-work. Yeah, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like Man, it's it's been like I don't trust a lot of people, man. True. I, I don't trust a lot of people, but when I can say about Tay and X, man, like we just I can call them brothers, man. Absolutely. Like, you know, I feel like I can talk to them about anything. Um and we just we come in here, man. We hold each other accountable every day. Like, if I'm slacking on my workout, they definitely gonna talk shit to me. As like, they should. All, all gate. Like, no they be on my neck. But they know when they come on this boxing side. The same oh, thing. y'all want to slack? Oh, nah. Yeah. I'm on your yeah. neck. Yeah. Come on, man. You're not slacking on. You're not slacking on this workout. So. Cut. About to say, you can't cut that. That uh, people see that Yeah, one. you, you gotta keep that in. Hey. But um, That's that two man, we, just, we, we uh we both know what we all know what we want to do here. Like, Facts. um, we we all know we talk about it all the time, and you know, um, it's in arms reach, and I know it is, and we we know it is. Like, we just come in here and just and and talk game plan all the time of what what's the next move, and you know, just always stay on top with each other man and try to keep each other uplifted because like i said sometimes shit ain't all good yeah so Get you know up. i know they got my back and yeah. they know i got their back yeah. you know what i'm saying so that's what it is it's it's a it's we brothers man and like i wouldn't trade like if i could go get my own gym right now if i had the money to go get my own gym right now i'm not going yeah unless so i can bring them y'all building something special here, yeah man. Like, it's a different dynamic right here no 100 i can i can vouch for that man like Y'all building something here, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm happy to say that I was a part of a small percentage of the part that, you know what I mean? Yeah, Saw it from the beginning, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I've been seeing it. It's just the, the excitement I see, people reaching their goals, you know what I mean? People yeah. getting their bodies where they want to get to, dog. Mm-hmm. It's dope. You don't see that. Like, yeah. you always see some type of friction going on. But, like, yeah. you know what I mean? See, we can sit here and have an interview. And yeah. these ain't ready, you know what I mean? Jump over each other, none yeah. of that other crazy nah, stuff, man. Sure. So, both of y'all, real quick, man, and we're going to get ready to wrap this thing up. Who is your biggest inspiration? Like, why do you do what you do? Is there a person? Is there a thing? Man, sure. Go back to me, like, my granddaddy. Yeah, 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 my granddaddy yeah. my inspiration. His birthday today. Happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, nah. Yeah, for sure. Birthday. For sure. He the reason. He the reason why I do what I do and why I do what I do. So, like, Absolutely. yeah, that's be it. Probably my... My mom and my aunt Didi. Um, just watching them, you know, as women hold it down the way they did, um, taking care of us, it's, it's probably probably them, you know. Just I remember just seeing my mama come home after work and she came home from work and have to, you know, fix us, fix meals and mm-hmm. all that, you know. Sometimes I look back on stuff like that and I'll be like, man, damn, I, I, sh- I should have just. I should have learned to cook so I can help my mom, you know what I'm saying? But um, them just seeing them, what they did, man, and you know, how they took care of me, how they really tried to do everything they could for me, man, they, they it's probably them too, for sure. Absolutely, man. So um, the, the question that I've been waiting to ask, man, I'm sure everybody wants to know. I already know the answer, but I'm gonna give y'all a chance to answer. We talk about football, we talk about boxing, we talk about weightlifting, we talk about being fathers, man, but, um, who the best basketball shooter in this gym? We talk about y'all and all the clients that come here too. So I mean, cool. y'all gotta be honest though, like because I feel like this is the problem. Yeah, this People is don't crazy, want to tell bro. the truth. Like <laughs> yeah. even, I'm, all I'm gonna now, say this, is I'm gonna okay. be I'm gonna be completely honest. It's crazy. It's crazy now. Last week I spanked their ass. No, bro. <laughs> listen, you said listen, listen, I said okay, okay, okay. Listen, all right, okay, listen, right, listen, right, listen, the combo. All right. Listen. So the rim used to be messed up, right? Oh. <laughs> the rim used to be messed up. When I say you, this nigga got the luckiest rolls oh, all the time. Everything, he got the luckiest rolls. But look, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straight up. He probably got the most. Ain't wins. no probably. I no, do. No. It's this by a long most, shot. It's not like, by a long shot. Trey. Now look. Now this is what he I'm gonna say. He no, got the most wins. Trey. Respect. Nah, I, I respect it. What I'm gonna say is this. Y'all play. Way more, you know what I mean? I, I come here occasionally. Okay. In the springtime, I'm gonna definitely get it back up though, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like the times I came, man. You won. You, had, you, had you came here last time. You now, last be time honest you though, here, you while won. you was winning, who else always, no matter, you can say this since you've been here, every time we walk back in here from outside in that back, who always won a series? 
Now you always won. And I, it's days I, when I him or ex don't win. So if you telling me anybody that come and sit in this seat where you at, if they come in there and say, hey, look, when we walk in here, at the end of the day, you can't. It's it's rare. It's probably one time out of the, since we had this. Now movie. you can stroke it. You can stroke it. It's one it. time. So it's it. like you can't even. It's like that's why I see you got to be honest with yourself now. Like no, I, everybody I can, can shoot, but from the record, it's really like it, it, it speaks for itself. That's why I, say I ain't gonna really. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, man, we are gonna keep playing. We are gonna keep stacking. You know what I mean? That's gonna have a chance to tell this part. But since he ain't here right now, he lies on the list. That's just what it is, man. Like. People gonna lie. Oh, what we gonna do next time since you got the podcast? We got to film one. No doubt. And that no way doubt. they gonna see. No yeah. doubt. And then it's gonna be nothing that you can say from that. Yeah. Nah. They do no that. doubt. No doubt, man. But fellas, man, y'all, um, I appreciate y'all, man. Just kind of, what, what's the next plans for y'all, man? Do y'all have uh, any short term goals, long term goals? Like, where do y'all see ourselves in the next couple years? Like, where you wanna take the business? All that, man. Man, we like we was telling you a little bit before we started. We're in the process of making this a one-stop shop for yeah. both our fitness and athletic clients. So, Absolutely. you know, we adding our recovery side, put some more cardio equipment in here. He about to get set up with his bags. Yeah. Sauna, we got the weights. Uh, really just changing the game, man. We trying to bring something that, you know, Charlotte ain't got. We want it yeah. to be something where now when these NFL players coming out, everybody ain't got to go to Miami to train. You ain't yeah. got to go to yeah. L.A. Like, you can come here. Charlotte is building up. We got nice rooftop places. We got restaurants Definitely. and stuff like that. So it's Definitely. when you come here, we know what y'all are looking for. You know, you want somewhere where it's quality training um, real quick. You can check the stats. Everybody that done worked out here in the off season, most of them getting then the rankings to get voted for the Pro Bowl this year. So, you know, people having a stellar season. So, you know, we trying to just build off of that and just, uh, you know, work and stack eventually to expansion, man. You know, we talk about it. I want this man to have his own space where we connect and we can knock this wall down and have Stokes Boxing Academy and Pure Grind all at once. So, you know, yeah. we the, the dream is big, but the grind sold separately and we, we on our absolutely. way to go get some stuff. No, absolutely, man. Is it uh, a dream client y'all want to have, man, or is it just whoever, whoever want to work? Shit, I feel like, man, we've been exposed. Well, we've been there in my end. I feel like we've been exposed to so much, man. I don't mm-hmm. even, I don't even look at people as like celebrities no more. Yeah. So it's like we was blessed. Like God blessed us to have a good first year. So yeah, with absolutely. the NFL offseason we had, with you know me training the baby, with me got that going, we running in here. He training the owners of rooftops, ex trainer mm-hmm. Mario Chalmers. The the list go on. So yeah. I don't think we got a dream. I don't have a dream client no more. It's more so shit. I'm trying to live like y'all. Y'all the dream, man. My thing more so to get you trying to get like y'all. I done seen enough. I'm like, all right, I know what it takes. So, and, and talking with y'all, that's the motivation. Like, giving you your flowers. Like, you did it. You did it at a level where you you did your thing, man. You you held it down. You stood tall. You represent something good out here. You I like what you stand for, the motivation. So, I can sit back True. and look at people like you. Your brothers, people that come in here, and to have what y'all have, God bless y'all, you know, with what he blessed y'all with. True. Now it's like, all right, me having a front row seat of that, I'm like, all right, I know what I got to do to get there. So yeah. that's that's the dream right there. Yeah. All right, Sharpers, all right, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely being around y'all boys, man, and seeing, you know, what y'all grew into, man, and, and the work that y'all did put in and the work that your mom and your dad instilled into you at a, yeah. at an early age, man. Um, you know, I always, I remember that stuff, man. Like, yeah. I remember it like it was yesterday. And, um, you know, I can't give your mom and dad, like, enough credit. That's the importance of having both mom and dad in the home. And, like, yeah. they did it to the, like, three kids in the league. Come on, man. Yeah. And yeah. not just saying that y'all y'all could have been doctors, lawyers, whatever y'all wanted to be, man, because y'all mama set y'all up for that. And your dad, y'all, they set y'all up for that. For sure, um, But a dream client, man, I can't say uh, I would like to work, just be around Floyd. How about that? I soak up some game. Absolutely. I got to, man. I now Floyd gonna see this, bro, because this joint yeah. going yeah. very well. But Rest to, to soak up the game, man, because, you know, I, I watch him, like, I watch him probably every day. Yeah. To learn something, I, I'm, I'm serious. I watch a uh, Floyd fight probably every night, yeah. um, and just to to learn, you know, because the way he the way he does things, man, it's just nah, he, he, it's it's different, man. 
is and different. He's a solid individual, bro. You say he's going to see it, bro. I, had to, I met him in Vegas, bro. When I'm there, when I'm on the trip, training the baby, we end up checking out his spot. Dang. And he seen, you know, seen us in there. He came over there, showed love, and I just went to him. I'm like, I had just seen this episode of The Pivot. I was like, bro, I seen you on The Pivot. You giving out game. And he pulled me. He was like, look, whatever you're doing, bet on yourself. And you're going to be all right. And I'm just like, damn, just to say that, and he rocking like, Blood to stand up, dude. If anybody bet on themselves, but it's him. Yeah. But yeah, just like some of the people that that I've been exposed to now, like I just look at them as like regular human beings, man. Because man. you know, being around Chalmers, Mario Chalmers, uh, Twan, uh, going to baby's house and and being around him, his training his nephews, like that's like I look at them like regular people now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't look at them like you know they got what I wanna. What I what I want yeah. where, where I, they at where I want to be, but yeah. I don't look at them like they regular human beings, you know. Nah, hundred percent, bro. Man, fellas, man, I definitely appreciate y'all taking the time out for sure, bro. Yeah, like man. being vulnerable, man, really kicking this game to everybody. Like, man, the whole world gonna see this, dog. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. That's what we gonna do. We gonna keep pushing each other yep. uh, to new heights, man. And once we get to the heights, we push each other too. We gonna even expand it even more, man. Cause yeah, that's just what it's all about, proud of you, man. Bro, for sure, dog. Nah, most definitely, man. So I love. Just tell the people, man. Shout out to Jim, man. Tell them how they can reach y'all. Let them know that you know what I mean. Y'all accept the new clients. Sure. You know what I mean? We gonna hey, be right there. Y'all at Pure Grind Fit. Man, Pure Grind Fitness, Charlotte, North Carolina. It's your boy Tay Fit, Tay Fit 45 on Instagram. My business partner is X Boyce, X Boyce 11 on Instagram. The Pure Grind page is Pure Grind Fitness. And yeah, we're accepting new clients. We building. We got some online stuff coming y'all way. So just follow the page, stay in touch, check us out. And I'm gonna pass it to my boy because he in here too. So you know, like you said, um, come check us out, man, Charlotte. Uh, Stokes Boxing Academy is my IG. So Stokes Boxing Academy, all one. Um, follow the page, man. TikTok too, man. I try to keep content coming all the time, but um, we we locked in, man. We we gonna get a uh, we gonna pack this joint out for sure. It's already there, but we gonna pack it out even more. So stay tuned, man. No doubt, man. It's a hoop in the back if you want your ass, but yeah, everybody yeah, doing it all. Cause I just whooped their ass last week, and we gonna leave it at that. We doing it all, and we out, huh? Yep. Ready.